So my biggest tip for everybody always is if you are interested in being an entrepreneur or you want to start a business, make sure you join a community, a place where other people have already done it so that you can, you know, get from, you can drain from their energy, you can take from them, you can learn from and you can ask questions. This is very, very key because we learn from other people's mistakes. Go. We are recording. Okay, um, Nicolin. First of all, uh, welcome to my podcast. Um, I live in Dubai, and my this podcast is called Minding My Business. And I generally talk to you know people from different walks of life, different professions, and you know I I, I saw your post the other day, and that's why I contacted you. Where you know it 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 says that you have. Uh, you know, you have grown your coffee shop to over 30 stores in five years. And that is what, you know, it got me like, uh, you know, using a multiplier method. So, of course, we are going to talk about this. And I did a little bit of research and I found out that you have a lot of other businesses. <laughs> yes. Probably <laughs> we can we can get some sneak peek into those. And I believe you have like seven other businesses as well. Yes, yes, I do. Yeah. So I enjoy talking about anything that can help someone else thinking out of the box or bigger and bolder for their business. I'm, I'm easy. Yes, of course, of course. And also I, I went through and I see there is a book as well. Probably I think um, it does talk about your journey, your it does it talk yeah. about what's called multiply to millions and does it talk yes. about so it's it's about all of the different businesses and it's okay. also about the myth that people believe in that's keeping them from making money you know okay. because we were all raised in different ways and we all believe different things so i talk about that and i talk about the good and the bad about business and everything so yeah it's recently just released i'm very proud of it i've never thought i could write a book so that was a nice a nice add to my to my profile now <laughs> I mean, you're, you're getting good at everything you're touching. So I think probably you'll have to write another one. in, in next <laughs> oh, <few years>. yes. <laughs> you know? And I think it shouldn't stop, of course. And this is so inspiring. I mean, I think people, you know, before I, I, I ask you to speak, I think what I should say after I, I read all of these, of course, I also went through one of those podcasts, which you did with Abigail. I mean, it's all over all over Facebook. So I, I went through for, for my own research and it's so inspiring because, you know, often from, I can talk about myself. Yes. I, you know, I come from India and from a country from such a vast population, you know, to start something, you know, when you see someone doing something like this, it does inspire us. And, you know, we all are, you, you could say there are a lot of ideas there, but then you need someone to show you, you know, how do you, how do you break that idea into a business and yes. you know, so so inspiring so nikolai I'll, I'll hand it over to you i would like to first i would like to start with your story first you know let's know a little bit about how it all started then we mm -hmm. can talk about your coffee business and let's touch a little bit on your other businesses as well so you know sure. me and my audience we can know like you know what is it that we have to do of course there's a lot of hard work but then yes. yeah let's over to you Awesome. Awesome. Well, Avi, thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm so honored to just share my experience because like you've mentioned before, everybody um, has great ideas for businesses. There's a lot of people out there that's actually currently sitting with amazing business ideas, but they just don't know where to start, what yeah. to do. And they're scared. They're scared that the idea won't work. And also a big thing for me is, is if you don't have people around you that's motivating you or that believes in you and that's giving you the right advice, it can actually harm you more than anything else. Yeah. So my biggest tip for everybody always is if you are interested in being an entrepreneur or you want to start a business, make sure you join a community, a place where other people have already done it so that you can, you know, get from, you can drain from their energy, you can take from them, you can learn from and you can ask questions. This is very, very key because we learn from other people's mistakes. So my journey started literally, um, you know, 14 years ago, my husband and I started our very first business from our garage. So it was not fancy. We did not have any money. It was very hot. We didn't even have an air conditioning in the, in the garage. It was very unprofessional, but we had a dream and we had a dream of building an empire and we knew it would take time but everything we did, we would do something today. And if it didn't work, we'll try to make it better tomorrow. And we had each other to, to focus on the bigger goal. So if you're doing it by yourself, that's why the community is so important. Yeah. And um, through the past 14 years, we've been able to grow into um, 
seven different businesses. And one of them is my little baby that I refer to. And it's the one coffee shop that I started and I franchised that across the country. And I know we're going to talk more about that as well. But for me, it's, it's all about dreaming big, allowing yeah. your ideas to just come to you. you know, sometimes we think of an idea and we think it's crazy, but if it stays with you for a while and it really excites you, I want to encourage you to go after it. I want you to start thinking like, how can I do this? What is the first steps to take? Who can I go ask advice from? And um, most of my clients that work with me, I, mean, I still tell them to go to someone in their industry. So if, let's say, for example, you're a baker and you want to open a bakery, Go to bakeries and ask the owners if you can buy them a cup of coffee and spend 30 minutes with them and just brainwash ideas, ask them questions, ask them what is their best lessons that they can teach you, what are some of the biggest mistakes they've made, because those minutes with those people are far more valuable than you trying to do something for 20 years all on your own. Okay, okay, understood. Of course, I mean, I think, I mean, yeah, I mean, me, me going out and starting something on my own, with probably, you know, without consulting anyone, that's always better to go to a baker and, you know, I mean, that guy knows. I mean, the person knows. Yes, it's just it's what a conversation. You know? Exactly. It's just to learn from them because he might say something to you that will save you months or change the idea why, yes. why you want to do something because he, he tried it and it didn't work this way, but then he did something else and that's the, the yeah. ticket that you need. Okay. Okay. Understood. Understood. So how how did this this start? I mean, when you when you made your first store, probably you know you you're saying back in you know 14 years back. Then then how did you did you like you know how much time did it take for you to grow from the first one to you know say I make my first store now? Say after five years you get your second store and then suddenly boom you know or did it like you know did it happen slowly or you know? Yes. So the business that we started from the garage was our very first business. And it's not the one that we franchise, but it is our biggest business. It's even bigger than my franchise business. Okay. Um, but it's something that every year we got a little bit bigger. So, for example, in our first year, we stayed in the garage and then we decided after the first year, we want to go and open an actual store. We want to get people to come and visit us. They want to come and see us. So we worked out what do we need to do? How much money do we need to save up? What do we need to sell to be able to afford a store so that we can rent and you know have a staff member? So we worked it out. It's all about the numbers. And then when we did that, the next year we went into a bigger space. And each year we grew little by little. Um, we, we believed that we didn't take big salaries. We stayed, you know, a, a small expenses list for our business because we wanted to put all the profits back because we had a dream, because we wanted to have this big warehouse, which we have today. And we have the elite clients that we are servicing because that was our focus. But the difference is through those 14 years, there was also other business ideas that came to us, which happens a lot to entrepreneurs because they want to do more and they see yeah, all these exciting yes. things. And this is great but you need to be careful not to do too many things at the same time. Yeah, so for yeah. example, only after about six years, we started our second business. And this was because we had very bad experiences with accounting from other yeah. people. So we decided okay. to start our own accounting firm to help okay. us. And now we also help other people as well. Oh, wow. So, so sometimes when you, when you have your business in, if they say you have a salon, if you're getting bad service from someone or you're always frustrated about a product that's always out of stock, ask yourself, could I start my own product line? Could I start a delivering service? Because I see so many other people also struggling. So it's a business that helps your business first, but you're also helping other people. So those are usually good businesses and we call them income streams so that you have more than one way to make money in your life and you don't just have the one space. But every two years, I mean, we started opening more businesses. So we have also got an imports and exports business because we import things from overseas and we send our products also overseas. So instead of using other people, we started our own business. And, and because we're doing we also, it for others as well, yeah? Like, exactly, because we saw other okay, people were yeah. also not happy. You know, they were also struggling. So if I'm struggling, there's someone else also struggling. And that's why the business worked. But we started it only for ourselves first which means okay. we knew okay. how much it would cost us to start the business. It was with one person. We didn't have a big uh, team. We opened an office in our building for that business. So we started small and then they would grow and grow and grow. But okay. then what happened was uh, five years ago, I decided to do something completely different. I wanted to get away from all the businesses we have. And I was introduced to the concept actually seven years ago about starting a coffee shop. 
And this was new for us. We've never done food. We don't, I don't even know how to make coffee. It was very, very, very big, strange idea. But the idea stayed with me for a very long time. And I really believed it was the universe telling me that I am meant to do this business. And we yes. started doing all our research. Um, Avi, it took me two years to get all the information, to know exactly how much it's going to cost me. Um, we did so much research and visiting coffee shops. I went to over 100 coffee shops. I drank their coffee. I sat in the coffee shops. I looked at what people did. I wrote down what I don't want in my business and what I want. So the research part is very important because when I ended that research stage, I knew exactly what my shop was gonna look like. I knew exactly what I wanna sell, why I wanna do it, which is very important. And then what happened is we opened our, our, our business and everybody loved it. It was a great success because I did my homework. I knew what people were not getting somewhere else and I was gonna give that for them. And after our first year, I realized that I cannot do everything in my business. I don't want to do everything. I don't want to work all these long hours, but I want to share my business with other people. And that's why we franchised our franchise. coffee shop. Okay. Yes, okay. but we didn't franchise it. I mean, like what you would see like McDonald's or Starbucks or those mm -hmm. people do. They mm -hmm. do it very corporate. It's very difficult yeah. to get in. It's a very hard process. I wanted to do it easy. I wanted to have it fun. I wanted to make sure that my franchisees make good money, but that they also get to become a business owner, which is very big. I wanted to help those people, you know, that always dreamed of owning a coffee yeah. shop, how they can have one and they can have it with me. So my clients that I help today that I teach franchising, I help them do exactly that. So that if you have a salon, you can sell your business to other people so that they can now also own a salon which is beautiful because there's so many entrepreneurs out there, Avi, who wants to have a business. They just don't know how to do it. But if they buy into your business, they have yeah. you to guide you make them. Money. They, they make money. You. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why I like that model. And also to ask you actually, because, you know, again, when I give a reference, I give the reference about India. So, you know, of course, I mean, this could have been an issue for you also. These are all, Hidden cost, of course, you know, apart from you setting up the business and all the research and all the cost, you know, there are costs such as the bureaucracy, the system itself, you know, I don't know, you know, which is something which we don't mention. Yeah, of course, yeah. the un unmentionables, you know, those costs are also there, those random yes. numbers which you have to pay. I mean, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know, you know, which bracket we'll put it into, but you have to, you have to even, uh, I think that is also a bigger cost, which you need to shell out as your business grows bigger, bigger, bigger. I mean, of yes. course, it's always there. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes this also keeps people from growing because they're scared to pay yeah. more taxes or to pay more VAT or whatever your country charges. But I think it's because we don't understand it. Now, I'm not a very big accounting person. I don't like to look at the numbers like that, but I've got people that advises me on what the best is. And when someone explains to you and they can show you on paper how your business will change and your life when you go into a new bracket. And yes, even though you pay taxes or you have to pay this license fee or there's this charge because your shop is in a shopping center, it still makes the business profitable. But you have to see it on paper. Someone has to give you the numbers because you have to work it out. That's why I'm saying we as entrepreneurs don't know everything and we shouldn't have to. There are reasons why there are people smarter than us that does accounting or people that have more experience that can share that with you so that you can see how this business model is going to work for you or not, but at least you can see it. And it's not just something that you're thinking about. It's actually a fact. So Nicole, I mean, you right now have what, like 14 salons over, we're talking about South Africa. This is 14 salons in South Africa, yeah? No, it's coffee shops, but we have 30. So we have 30 coffee oh. shops across the country, yes. Oh, that's massive. So are you are you like also planning to now go international as well? I guess you've already covered the whole of South Africa. It's something that we are considering. Yes, we really would love the brand to be able to be across the world, but it wouldn't be something that I want to do. It's something that I would love to partner with some, someone in a specific country, and then they can run that business in that country because it's all about for me sharing my business. I want to share my concept with other people. Um, I've already made my money. I'm very happy with my success so far, but I really feel like if it's working for me why can it not work for someone else so if you can okay. share it okay. that is really my motto going forward okay okay 
also uh, to be to be i i just wanted to uh, you know talk about talk more about your coffee business just to be more specific so you know just want to get an idea so your coffee business is it like is it like say you know i go to a barista or a, or a, or or you make your own coffee beans or you know how is it like do you outsource your coffee or are you now making it yourself i i guess if you're not you will start doing it soon <laughs> Exactly. So what's happened up until now is that half of the food that we sell, we bake inside the coffee shops. Uh -huh. But some of the coffee shops are very, very small. So there's not a lot of room for them to work. But um, the other half of the menu, we get delivered every day to the coffee shop. The coffee beans, we get them roasted and then we use the coffee machines inside the coffee shop to make the fresh coffee. However, we are now going to open all of these facilities ourselves so that I'm the main supplier yes. to all of my coffee shops. The reason also for that is not just to make more money and have more control, but it means that it simplifies the life of my franchisee. Every Instead product having, you have is produced by you. You know, that's yes, the idea. And, and, Exactly. And, and then at least I know the quality, I control that, but also you're going to get one invoice with your delivery. You're not going to get 20 suppliers coming every day, you know, one bringing the milk and one bringing the donuts and one bringing the cups. Everybody comes from one place. It's more organized. There's less overwhelm because you want the business to run as smoothly as you possibly can. Okay. Okay. Understood. 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 And um, I was reading one of your posts as well. I mean, Nicole, and I've read all of your blogs. So, <laughs> you know, I, I was reading where it says, you know, your salon has also, you know, I think this is um, where uh, your salon provides free treatments as well. You know, I was, you know, each week. And then there is a lot of healthcare given to your employees as well. To yes, make yes. Better. So that's I a very nice idea that that's we started. That's a very nice uh, idea, to be honest. Yeah. Years ago, um, and that's also how the business was, was uh, born, is because I wanted to do something for my staff. I wanted to create a business where um, they can get free treatments because they work in my building every day. Um, but instead of hiring someone to come in and give everybody a facial or a massage, my husband said, well, why don't we just start a salon so that you can run a business from it at the yes, same time? Yes. So sometimes if you're listening to this and you, you have a business idea, it doesn't always have to be a million dollar business idea. It can start yeah. off as something small, but it can grow into something really beautiful. And even though it's in my corporate building, we've got hundreds of clients from outside that also visit the salon. Um, and now we're actually revamping the whole building. So we'll build a new salon specifically for this because I want to treat my staff. That's my first priority and then any customers that we get extra is just a bonus so when you start your business idea try to think of something that's very different something that nobody else is maybe doing in your town or in your area and that's what makes you stand out with your more. staff and then grow into a community and probably exactly okay yeah okay. i mean i mean this is unique i have not heard of a style like this and uh, you know i mean are you also giving uh, you know, business consultations to new people as well, like randomly? I mean, do you have people randomly like, I mean, I, I pinged you for a podcast. Do you have people randomly message you for, you know, a random business tip or something? I mean, of course, you yes, would be yes. I've got people. clients every day that message me that either want to work with me directly or they want to go into one of my programs because I've got different programs that will help you either start a business from scratch or how just to take your business and make double your income. I've got specific programs for people who want to franchise because that's something that they've always wanted to do. And then some clients don't like doing programs. They really just want to work one-on-one -on -one with me so that they can get a call every week or every second week. And I tell them exactly what to do. And then they go and do that because that works better for them. And they want to be a bit more private. They're more shy people. They don't want to share you know, all their information with everybody in a group. Um, but yes, every day we get people that ask us about how to do this. Either they can buy my coffee shop or they want to work with me because they have a beautiful salon or you know i just spoke to someone now who has um an, a, um, a sunglass business i also spoke to someone that has um, a pet grooming business and they want to have more of these everywhere and you know so there's different advices that i can help people with also uh nicole it, uh, sorry I, I keep asking so one more thing i mean see there are a lot of people again I mean, people like you, of course, you guys have, you have a lot of clarity and you are so successful. Then there are people who have say, you know, um, like there are hundred ideas, but they're just one idea born in one corner, corner of the head. 
and it dies off the next day so are you even able to help people with say you know people come with you with a concept with just mm -hmm. a concept you know say you know of course we have not done the groundwork there's nothing done yeah. but are you able to like say like you know sometimes you know you have to say the hard stuff no it's not possible yes, yes it's possible <laughs> are you able to yes. do that as well like you know yes. A lot of clients, even my clients who have businesses will come up with new ideas. So yes, even if you have an idea, I'm able to take that idea, um, expand it for you, make it look into reality. I'll tell you the pros and cons of what I think this business is able to reach. Uh, we talk about, I'll ask you a lot of questions so that you can actually answer some of it yourself to figure out if this is a good idea or if it's just an idea that you like. But a tip in general, I mean, for people that do come up with lots of ideas is to write it down, to keep a specific book for all of your ideas. And if after uh, you know a month, the same idea keeps coming back to you, that's something that I would pay attention to. But if you're thinking, you know, you want to open a flower yeah. store today, I mean, yeah, but tomorrow, yeah, yeah. But tomorrow yeah. you're not thinking about it anymore, then let the idea go because that means the idea is meant for someone else. But if you constantly think about it, if you get excited about it, if you're on your phone, you're not spending time on Facebook, but you're actually researching about a flower shop or, you know, the different types of flowers and you, it just, it makes you happy. Then that is a different type of idea that's growing inside of you. And that's why you need to pay attention to it. But yes, I help clients come up with their idea. And from the beginning, I help them grow it right so that they can have multiple stores if they want. They can franchise it if they want to, but they can even just keep it themselves and just be massively successful. Oh, wow. I mean, I think you should be in the Forbes top 10 women. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're yeah, such a darling. <laughs> I mean, this, is, this is very, very exciting. I think, I mean, Forbes is again just a name. You know, it's just yes, a name. Exactly. It's just a tag. It's, just a, name. it's mm -hmm. just a tag. But, you know, I think this is something which, you know, apart from your experience, you know, what we talked is wisdom. And, you know, you never know. I, I close my laptop and I go back and give serious thoughts about things I've thought. So this is so inspiring. One last thing before I think we are coming to an end to our podcast. Let me ask one last thing, which I ask everyone. How busy is it? And how much time at the end of the day do you actually, you know, where you are a busy, you are a busy person. You are very busy. I mean, you can't be busier than this. So how much time are you able to probably, you know, or you are like pretty okay. You, you know, things are handled pretty well. You know, like people are yeah. like. You know. Yeah, I, I think it's important for people to know the real facts. And like we were talking about before, you know, I wrote my book specifically about this because there are good parts and there's bad parts and managing yourself and your time is very important. But when you start a business, if you're very serious about it and you want to be successful, you have to put in the time. And I'm talking about long hours. You have to put in whatever is required from your business. Now, some businesses doesn't need you to work 20 hours a day, but some businesses might need that. For example, yeah. when we started our coffee shop, I worked 20 hours a day but I was living on adrenaline. I loved every minute of it. It didn't feel for me like work. I did. I was not hating it. It was because I because was you so believed in it. You believed in it. And, exactly. you know, when, and you so when you have that, it gives that, it gives exactly. that adrenaline. Yeah. So if you can see that and you want it so badly that even if you have a full-time job right now, when you come home and you've put the kids to bed and you've done dinner and everything's ready, you then take two or three hours, even at night, and you work on your business idea and you grow your clients, that means that you have determination. It is what separates us from people who only talk about starting a business and those who actually go and create it. But the idea is always to grow a business so that the business can run without you. It's one of my big pillars that I build my programs yeah. on as well and my coaching, because if your business only can survive because of you, it means that if you're sick for two months, your business it's is going to fail. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. As you grow, yes, you're working super hard now, but in two years and in three years, you should not be working like that. I, for example, don't work on Fridays. I only work about four hours a day today, and we have seven different businesses, but it's because I built teams. I have people that help me. I don't want you to don't do everything. You don't have to constantly... Else. Yeah, that's that's and, what sustainability and when I speak is about. To people, I mean, like when I speak to people in the beginning, they they're scared to let go of their business. They're scared to hire people to help them. But when you want to go you in that direction, you have to be Agreed. able to yes. let go. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we. I mean, at the end of the day, you just have one brain and two hands. Like, how exactly. much can I do myself? So exactly. you know, I think exactly. you know somewhere. You know, it's not about agreeing. Of course, I agree with whatever you say, but. You know, it rings a bell. I mean, when you 
when you uh, share when you when you share your idea and and you know there is someone else you know yeah a part of you know from that 100% effort at least that 20% goes off and like that yes. probably you know yeah i mean of course i mean this is something which you know a lot of good ideas have come out of you right now in last uh, 20 minutes and it is Thank something you. which i'll probably rewind this podcast also and go through a few things because i think the way i personally think the way you have set up your uh, salon business you know i think that is like phenomenal i think uh, i have not uh, you know we hear we hear stories from time to time but this is again you know up there you know this mm-hmm. your story is up there and uh, i'll definitely go ahead and and find your book and order myself as well because that is something Thank which, you. you know i would love to read and know more about in detail and yeah yeah um that's it uh, nikolin i will not take much of your time thank you thank so much you, again Abby. Yes, thank and, you so much uh, for having me. I just want to, I just want to remind everybody to start somewhere. Everybody starts somewhere. All the famous people, you know, all the billionaires, everybody, even the the the, the business owner next to you, also started somewhere. And that's where the difference comes in. It's just taking that first step with your idea and keep going. And if you don't have help, find help because that's what keeps the momentum going. And lastly, Nicolin, if someone has to contact you for consultancy how do they reach you for my audience the easiest would be would be to go through instagram so i'm nicolin alhadat coaching underscore and you can find me there you can send me a direct message i'm nicolin alhadat on all my platforms um i will also send you a link that you can share with your audience i have a free guide on how you can grow and scale your business more and that's something just to get you going so if they want to speak to me they can just direct message us through that thank you so much nicolin i mean that was lovely no speaking to you thank you so thank much you have so a beautiful much. day Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.